Hey, what's going on? It's Greg here from Kinobody.com, and I'm super pumped to share with you this podcast that I recorded with Stephen Amell. He's the star on the show Arrow, um, very popular show. It's, it's a CW show, um, and it's exploded in the last few years. And he's really fit. He's got a great physique, kind of resembling of that Greek god Kinobody physique. Um, and he's going to talk about, uh, about his workout and about filming the show. Um, so that's going to be very, very cool. Now, before we jump into this, um, I crafted together a Kino body style workout to attain his sort of physique and to be able to, you know, do muscle ups and have powerful legs so you can like sprint and jump high and be able to do like handstand push ups and stuff. So if you guys want to download that, uh, that workout, it's, it, it, it's the workout Kino body style for the aero physique, then hit the link on this, uh, on this video or go over to, uh, kinobody.com slash aero. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, anyways, guys, let's jump in. What's going on? Uh, you guys are listening to the Road Trip Podcast, and today we have on a very special guest. We have Stephen Amell on, um, who's in the show Arrow, the hit show, which is actually awesome. He's in really, really great shape, and so he'll be sharing some fitness tips with us today. So it's a, it's a huge pleasure. Uh, Stephen, what's going on, man? Not much, guys. How you doing? Do, I'm doing pretty good. Um, doing so, you know, like, just to kick, kick it off, um, I think a lot of people are curious, like, how did, like, first off, how did the, um, the show Arrow come about, and what kind of condition physically were you in before, like, in that casting process? Uh, it's a good question. I was, uh, I'd been living in Los Angeles for almost two years, and, um, you know, I had, <clears throat> I'd done nine American jobs before Arrow, uh, Arrow being my 10th, and, um, for for a couple of them, uh, I had to be shirtless. Like my, my role on the HBO show Hung and my role on Private Practice, I seemed to be shirtless all the time. But all I was really doing at the time was going on hikes in LA with my dog and going running. And I had a chin up bar in my house, so I was in shape insofar as I was, you know, fit but I wasn't really trying to take my fitness to the next level in any way. Um, and then when I, and then when I got arrow, um, you know, for, for what a big part, Oliver being shirtless in the first season and training and doing all that stuff turned out to turned out to be in the first season of the show. That wasn't, I, I don't think that that was part of the original image of the show. Uh, I remember reading in the script uh, in the pilot, you know, Oliver emerges from shower, um, you know, shirtless and scarred and fit. And that was it. That was the only description. And the producers never spoke to me about anything beyond that. They weren't like, hey, take off your shirt during the audition process. Um, the first time that they shot, saw me shirtless would have been a couple of weeks before we went to camera when we first started doing the tests for the tattoos and the scars. Wow. Okay. So a lot of those like physical stunts that you do in the show – just they just decided to 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 kind of go into that um kind of almost like you know later or is it something that because you're in such great shape they're able to like work that in there yeah, so what happened was you know i got cast in early february and we didn't go to camera until mid-march mm -hmm. the job that i was working on in la uh wrote me out of the show very kindly because i was going on to do something else and uh and then i I, I basically had six weeks and I went through uh, like a multi-pronged attack. The first thing that I did was I changed my diet. Um, I cut out gluten and I cut out dairy, which I, both things that I never considered at any point in my life, but I wanted to try and you know, just add a new wrinkle uh, in some way, shape or form. So it was about a week of changing my diet and getting used to that because I was starving just because my body was missing things that it had been getting for, you know, my entire life. Uh, the second step was I started into basic fight training. Uh, people ask me all the time if there was a specific type of martial arts, but it's less a specific type of martial arts and it's more learning how to fight on screen. Mm -hmm. And then I went out to a spot in, uh, in Reseda, California called uh, the Tempest Free Running Academy, which is all like parkour and, free running and, and body weight manipulation, those types of exercises. And 
we started sending those clips of me training to our stunt coordinator, JJ Macaro, uh, in Vancouver. Um, and he started sharing them with our director. Our director just said, show me all the different stuff that they had in this gym. They ended up having a salmon ladder bar in the gym. And when they found out that I could do it, they actually built one. And so in the first episode, when I do the salmon ladder and it's this, you know, it, it's this sort of um, lasting image from the pilot, the network and the studio immediately were like, well, what exercise is he doing in episode two and three and four? And, and that's, that's how it was born. Damn. And so for people that don't know the salmon ladder, that's where you're hanging from like a, almost uh, like, almost like a, like a, a bar and you're essentially just jumping up and attaching it to like a higher um, lever point. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's basically <clears throat> you, you do a chin up, but instead of a regular chin up, you think of it more like a, more like a J shape where you, you duck your body underneath the bar a little bit. You sort of thrust yourself forward and then you come up in a J shape. And when you get to the top of the chin up and your head is above the bar, if you've used your momentum correctly, there's a brief moment of weightlessness and you just take the bar from one rung and you bring it up to the next one. I still get people, I've done at least 10 exercises on the show that are harder than the salmon ladder, but for whatever reason, the salmon ladder is just this visual marvel that I still to this day get people that are big fans of the show that, that ask me if it's real or not. I'm like, what are you talking about? Of course it's real. But, uh, yeah. I, I see that on American Ninja Warrior, actually. I think they have, uh, there's a segment in American Ninja Warrior where one of the, one of the levels is with, with the salmon ladder. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, part of the, it's part of the course. And people that do American Ninja Warrior train at the Tempest Freerunning Academy, which is why they have the salmon ladder bar there. Okay. Oh, nice. No kidding. And so for people that don't know, if you go on YouTube, there's actually a very popular video of Stephen Amell um, training parkour. Yeah. It, I, I found that it's very, yeah, it's very cool. And so you can see that like, I mean, you're not just an actor. You're also like a, you know, physical specimen. You're like an athlete. You've trained your body to uh, essentially look the part and as well um, be able to like to move in a certain way, which is, which is very impressive. And so that, so that's come down to um, training in the parkour, doing like the fight training. And have you had to like focus on strength training to build muscle as well? Yeah, you know, the, the, the show, it, it, I wouldn't say that I made a mistake when I did this, but when we shot the pilot, we had 17 days to shoot the episode, and I had six weeks to train, where I literally had nothing else to think about other than this one episode of television. <laughs> to put that in perspective, when we get into episodic work for the actual series, we have eight days to shoot an episode, and, and the episodes since the pilot have gotten bigger, and then we just roll right into the next episode. So I actually found that from a fitness perspective, it was almost a um, binge and purge isn't the right word, but, but, it, but it's actually not totally inaccurate. I, I, was, I certainly wasn't purging in, in the sense of the word that you may think, but I would get so busy with work, and then I would know that I would have a shirtless scene coming up so I'd go on a four-day binge of training, and then when I would get a break, I would want, and this would I essentially be the purge section, I would want nothing to do with the gym whatsoever. Wow. Um, so it wasn't until season two, and then even more so this year, that I've, that I've found the balance of, unfortunately, I'm just not going to be able to replicate the shape that I got into for the pilot. I don't think that it's A, healthy, or B, attainable. So it's more about finding a balance and, um, in a, in a comfort with my physique and getting away from that crazy four day workout binge and then do nothing and more just find a balance. Like this morning I went and did, uh, not weights, but just, uh, you know, exercises like push ups, chin ups, uh, some abdominal work for maybe 15 minutes. And then I ran six kilometers. And if I can do that four or five times a week in, or three, four times a week in coordination with working 
14 hours a day, which is what we get into on the show, then, I'm, then I'll, I'll be in the exact type of shape I need to be. Right. So I guess that's something that, you know, people don't realize. I think a lot of people have this um, belief that actors have like incredible schedules. They can just work out whenever they want. Getting in shape is so easy if you're an actor. And that's completely not true. I mean, in your case, you have to like literally work your um, workout schedule around the show. Because in the, the very first season, you had those six weeks to prepare, which honestly, like from a fitness perspective, it's not that much time. But in your, like, in your shoes, that was like a ton of time. And so you can get into your best shape ever. And then from then on, it's like you have, you know, a few days where you have to like get ready for a shirtless scene and you can put it in. And then I only imagine that after like training excessively for, you know, several days that, yeah, you don't want to even see the gym. It's just, it's just sickening at that point. Yeah, to say nothing of the fact that in the first season I was a bachelor and now I'm married with a kid. So <laughs> you have to, I mean, what will happen oftentimes is, you know, I, I will get stretches of time this season on the show where I, where I have breaks. Like, I was off for the first couple of days of this week. Um, but when I get into an episode where, like my more typical episode, where I will work six, seven, eight out of eight days, um, you know, I'll, we have a 12-hour turnaround on the show. So I'll finish work, I'll get home, my daughter will be asleep, I'll want to talk with my wife for a little bit. And then when I get up the following morning, oftentimes, unless I want to really push myself and get up at like six o'clock to work out from 6.30 until 7.30, which is not always realistic because I probably didn't go to bed until one o'clock in the morning. So when I get up at say, you know, eight o'clock and I'm going to have to go to work at, at nine, uh, if I want to go work out, I miss the hour of time that I get to spend with my daughter. And so, like, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all about balance. And, and that, that's the main thing is, you know, I've talked to the production. I think that we would actually benefit from having an onset gym mm -hmm. um, and maybe an onset trainer uh, from time to time. And that's something that we're actually, I think, maybe going to explore in the coming season because, it's, it's become very, very difficult for me to schedule in something like a workout in addition to family time and to actual work time. So I think that it would be easier for me if, the, if, if from a production standpoint, we began um, basically just accounting for my exercise in my work day. Right. That makes a lot of sense because that's a huge component of, 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 you know, playing Oliver Queen is you have to look that part. And so the, the training is essential. I would have say I would have assumed that there would have been an onset gym, but I guess like, you know, um, up until now that kind of makes body weight exercise very, very useful where, where if you have like, you know, 10 minutes, you can just like, you know, do what you can, some chin ups or some push ups um, and various stuff of that nature, um, which is, is that, that's, yeah. You, you, yeah. You know, you, you'd think so. They had the infrastructure in place in the pilot from the standpoint of, you know, I wasn't paying to go to Tempest. They were, they, you know, they, they found me a fight trainer. They found me a guy to go work with. Um, and, you know, but, but now the production being what it is, it's a very, the production is incredibly different than it was in the beginning. For example, if you're not a fan of the show, it began pretty much with just me in, you know, in, in, in the superhero persona, so to speak. Um, now, you know, across the board of the show, we have five or six people that are all supposed to be quote unquote, you know, superheroes out there kicking butt in Starling City. So I think that the production has changed. And, and as a result, it, it's something that, you know, it's something that, that, that the producers and I have, have spoken about. And the, their dialogue has always been very, very good with me because, you know, I, I remember... I remember feeling pressured in season one where I had a shirtless scene after um, I think it was a Tuesday and, you know, I was working until 7 a.m. on Saturday morning and then I was traveling to Los Angeles for press Saturday. Sunday I was enjoying Canadian Thanksgiving with my friends and Monday I had press starting at like 6 a.m., all the way through that night, and then I was going up. So unless I wanted to spend a couple of hours on Sunday, 
Now, I'm sure that my body looked okay, but as you well know, a lot of wanting to, a lot of it is mental. You just want to feel like you put the time in. Um, you know, I don't look different after my workout this morning than I did before it, but I feel better for having worked out. Right, it's a confidence there. Mm -hmm. There is, and just, just a confidence, and, and, and prep it's the same way that, you know, you don't want to go to set without learning your lines. You don't want to go to set and, and, and try to rely on dehydrating yourself so that you look a certain way. You want to go to set knowing that you've had a workout and you feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, it. That's actually, there's – I remember um, in an interview for uh, like right after 300, Gerard Butler was talking about that. He's like, yeah, you know what? We probably didn't have to push as hard as we did you know, to film 300, but he's like, when we put on like, the costumes and, and we stepped on set, like we felt like lions. And, and, you know, also there's the whole, like, I'm going on national TV, you know, with, uh, without a shirt on. So kind of want to feel good about myself. Yeah. I mean, you know, w <laughs> let's not pretend that vanity is not a certain aspect of acting. Um, it is. Um, I, I feel like, you know, in, in, in the scale of actors, I'm on the very, very low side of vanity, but that still puts me relative to the rest of society relatively high. And, um, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be afraid to admit that we, we picked a, you know, we, I, I picked a vocation where looks are important. That, that being said, you know, I, one of, one of the things I always say is great. You know, I'm, I'm shirtless and doing a salmon ladder in the first episode that clip immediately exists on YouTube. If people didn't like the show and the acting, then they wouldn't have tuned back in for the second episode. They just wait for the next workout clip to show up online. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm a huge I'm a huge fan of, of movies and TVs uh, and TV shows, and, and the show is awesome. Um, so I mean, anyone that um, that hasn't seen the show yet, it's Arrow. Like, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's it's uh, very entertaining. Um, and so, yeah, that's something that like people don't realize is just like the mental aspect of of you know um, creating that intensity so that when you go in, you feel prepared. Um, one question that I had for you, Stephen, was. Um, for you, like in your specific case, are you someone where, you know, if you're not working out, if you're not on top of your nutrition, do you, do you like stay lean, but you just don't have that much muscle? Um, or is it the opposite where you kind of lose a lot of definition? Because people, different people fall into different camps. Like me, if I like stop working out and, and stop, uh, you know, being diligent on my nutrition, I will just kind of gain fat, but other people will get skinny. Um, I will... Uh, it, it's weird. My, my weight will go down a little bit, but what I'll feel is I, I almost feel uh, deflated if I stop, if I, if I stop working out that way, like I, I'll feel deflated. And as a result of feeling deflated, I almost like uh, flabby, mm -hmm. which is not, I don't really think that's how I look, but that's how, you know, that's how I feel. I, I know, like, you know, I, my, I, I got a buddy who hurt his shoulder uh, this summer and, um, and, and he couldn't work out for months on end and he just got skinny. That was it. Like, he didn't really change his nutrition. He just couldn't work out and, and, it, and all of a sudden he was like, he was not wasting away, but he got noticeably skinnier like he would joke about it and uh you know for me it's more if i build myself up i feel like i maintain that same shell and i just don't have as much stuffing underneath right yeah so it's like almost yeah it's almost like a phenomenon where you your muscles kind of flatten out and you also don't look as defined um and then and when the opposite occurs of course when you start like training again you get more definition your muscles fill out and then you nail those uh, the shirtless scenes. So early in the early in this episode, um, you talked about how the salmon um, ladder looks the most visually impressive, um, yet it's not the hardest. So which exercises that you do in the show um, do you find? Uh, which ones were the most challenging? The most challenging one I did in the second episode. I was just, uh, and I feel like there's a training montage on YouTube. There's like a training montage from season one. Um, but in the in the second episode, I. Um, basically pull myself up a rope just with my arms. Oh yeah. And I do it and I do it in a way 
that is, is anatomically is not totally the correct way to do it. It's just basically trying to show off forearm and upper back strength. And it was incredibly difficult. Like I was able to do like one or two takes and we had to make sure that we nailed it because just it, like there are certain muscles that once they once they go they're gone. Forearms being one of them, where they'll just end up being totally shot. Um, but yeah, so that was difficult. The most physically challenging thing that I've ever done on a television show was actually on uh, was was actually on Hung on HBO, where in the second episode I have sex with a lady in a bathroom stall. And it was my idea to, sorry, this is slightly. No, no, don't worry. But it was my, it was my decision to hold her up. Right. I'm like, I'll hold her up. Then you can shoot from the, and you can, you can imagine the visual in your head, but I basically had to support a full human being who was thrashing around with one arm. And we must have done 12, 15 takes. And I couldn't lift my arm for three, four days afterwards just because it, it passed the point of being muscular, muscularly, like, defeated. It was just – it was dead. Damn. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, that sounds absolutely brutal. And I mean, like, yeah, I mean, one thing people don't realize is that when you're, when you're doing these – there's just multiple takes. So even when you're doing that rope, uh, maybe, like, one time you can, like, nail it, but then – you got to get like the perfect shot. And so you got to do it again and again. And then you're, yeah, once your forms are gone, it's, it's game over. Right. And it's, it's also, it's also your responsibility to talk with the director and say, look, man, uh, let's get this shot set up. Let's not discover it on the day because realistically um, I'm going to be able to do this between three and four times. Like whenever you see me as the arrow character, uh, drop into a scene and you'll see this often on the cut, you know, like you'll just see my feet hitting the ground. We actually, the stunt department will rig something where I'll, I'll hold on to like, you know, uh, like the types of things that you would see trapeze artists on and I'll have to hold on with one hand because keep in mind the other hand, I have the bow and they'll have to raise me up so that my feet get out of shot and then they'll yell action and I'll just drop in. I can do that maybe three or four times before my hand that I'm working with, typically the right hand, because I'll have the bow in the left hand. It's just like, nope, that's it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, man. No more. So it's, it's about making sure that you design the shot properly so that when it comes time to execute it, you're not discovering it as you move through it. Wow. Yeah, that that's is interesting. Yeah, that is. These are like I, things you know people don't kind of. Uh, realize when they're watching the show, it's very cool. What, what I think is yeah. actually like, the most interesting is that, so like seeing like the level of physique development that you have just, you know, from, from seeing you in the show and everything, I would have thought that, I don't know, like, so one of my, my questions going in here was like, God, dude, how do you manage like shooting and working out that much? Because obviously I know, you know, I've watched past interviews with you. Um, and, I mean, you talked about how crazy your schedule is. And I'm like, how do you balance working out what is probably like an hour, at least an hour a day into all of that? But hearing that, like, that you don't designate time every day to work out and that you're able to maintain the physique that you have is, is even more impressive to me. So, Well, thank you. It's, I mean, you know, I'm, not, I'm, also not, I'm also not sitting behind a desk and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, reading for 14 hours or typing or filing. I'm, you know, for example... Today, I am out and I'm in the arrow suit all day and I'm fighting all day long. So it's not a, it's not a concentrated, um, it's not a concentrated workout and it's not necessarily specific to any particular part of my body, but I will be getting exercise all day today. And, you know, that in the grand scheme of things, that, that counts for something, certainly. Well, yeah, that's more exercise than I do. So, I mean, yeah, hats off. Like, it's very intensive. And so, um, what's your, you know, what, so what's your favorite, like, you know, if you're going to go eat out and, like, kind of um, have, like, a cheat meal or whatever, what's your favorite food to have? My favorite food is, uh, oh, God, Italian food, pasta. Absolutely. 
um, you know, when I said that I, I removed gluten and dairy from my diet, I, I'm still uh, in large part stay away from, from dairy because there's so many good alternatives like goat's cheese and well, basically just goat's cheese. It's fantastic and almond milk and all that stuff. So I, I found that I don't really need to do dairy, but, you know, find me an Italian restaurant with like four things on the menu and a pasta that they make in-house and I'm set, set and settled. Um, I love sushi. <laughs> You know, yeah, I like I like sushi. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a big Thai food fan, but I, I never find, you know, I, I just find that it, that in general, if you sacrifice even a tiny bit of flavor for a meal that is of higher quality, um, it, then all of a sudden you're not like starving an hour after you finished, uh, like an hour after you finished eating. Uh, and, and that's what I found when I when I switched I switched away, especially from the from the dairy. And you know, sometimes I'll go without gluten. Um, I don't actively seek it out. Um, I, I don't. There are gluten free alternatives that I that I actually quite enjoy. Um, but you know, if you're going to a nice Italian restaurant, just knock it off with you know asking them if they have gluten free pasta. Just enjoy <laughs> the you know enjoy the homemade in restaurant experience, and you know maybe don't get a cream sauce. Right. Yeah, the cream sauce is loaded with tons of calories. It's not like worth it. Like, it's not that much better than tomato sauce. I don't. No, tomato sauce or olive oil or you know, any of those things. Yeah. All right. But, cool. But I think. Right, I think. I think overall. I think overall. Just just to add like a finish point. What I've discovered is that as long as there's balance in what you're doing, as long as you're, um, as long as you're not fretting about every calorie that goes into your mouth, and you're not you know, gorging yourself when you eat, you're going to be fine. Um, it's, it's just, it's just about having that balance and, and, and reading and becoming a little bit more educated about what, in, what you're putting in your body. You know, it's so funny that you kind of finished off on that point because that's sort of like the main motif that we talk about on the, on the podcast is not falling to that obsessive camp, you know, having that relaxed, moderate approach so you can enjoy life while, you know, getting in shape and, you know, maintaining that balance. Um, Stephen Amell, it's been so awesome having you on the podcast. Um, absolutely love your show. For anyone listening, you know, make sure to go check out Arrow. Um, totally kick ass. Um, and yeah, it's been a pleasure. Hi, is, I got actually one. Oh. Yeah, I, I got one last question, man. What is uh, sure. what, what what's next on your plates? I mean, Arrow is, is thriving right now. You're you know mid third season here. Um, so I mean, there's still that, but uh. You know, what What can we expect from Mr. Stephen Mell in the future? Yeah, it's a good question, man. Um, you know, Arrow, on Arrow, we, we basically have, um, you know, along with The Flash, uh, the longest production schedule of any television show out there right now. Like, I don't think, say, for, you know, like kids' shows where they do one show a week and take an eight-week break so they can bang out as many episodes as possible before the kids grow up, in terms of like actual superhero hour long network television drama, our schedule is massive. We start uh, early July and we finish late April. So when you sort of factor in the decompression aspect of finishing a season and then the preparatory aspect of starting a new one, you're realistically looking at May 1st to July 1 in terms of your break. So for me, um, I have aspirations to do films. Uh, there are a couple of projects that I am attached to at the moment, which means that, you know, I, I've, I've agreed to participate in the movie if all of the pieces fall into place. A couple of those I'm, I'm really excited about. But, you know, right now, my buddy and I have a business that's uh, a winery business that's thriving. Um, I've, got a, I've got a 15-month uh, old daughter and you know, I may do a movie this hiatus. I may go to Europe and do literally nothing for <laughs> four or five weeks. Um, but, you know, the, awesome. the, the, goal, the goal is movies, but it, it really is when I think about how hard I work during the year and how, not draining, but how all-encompassing a, a full season of Arrow is, I have to find a film and an opportunity that is just an absolute no brainer, have to do it. Otherwise I'd be completely stupid. And um, I think that one of those may have popped up, but my window is so small that it, it really will come down to timing. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. awesome. What's the winery that you have? Yeah, my buddy and I started a winery called Knocking Point Wines out of Walla Walla, Washington, and um, sold our first bottle of wine in uh, in July of, of of 2013, and then and then the business really really started to ramp up uh, this past year, and um, and it, and has just continued to to do so. So, um, you know, we've had some fun uh, throwing some parties. Uh, we've, we've thrown three parties so far: one in Walla Walla, where the Walla, where the where the winery is based; one in uh, in LA, where we live; and then uh, recently, I was in Portland for an event. We threw a we threw a party in Portland, so we're actually throwing one in uh, in Birmingham, in the UK, in May. And we're thinking about tacking on a another party, and uh, and and then you know maybe going and seeing a little bit of Europe with our with our families. So. We shall see. Awesome, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun being in business. Wow. Yeah. That's that's very so cool. cool. Well, we wish you nothing but the best. Um, I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to more Arrow coming up. And uh, thanks so much yeah. for your time, man. I know it's crazy for you to get away, let alone for um, you know, extracurricular, you know, calls like this. So really appreciate the time that you took for today. It's all good, brother. It's great to meet both of you, even on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so awesome. much. Take For care, sure, man. Take Bye, care. Guys. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, before you go, make sure to go over to kinobody.com slash arrow. That's where I wrote, you know, my version of achieving, you know, the, the Stephen Amell, the arrow physique and that level of physical um, capacity, the ability, to, you know, to you know, hang from bars, do muscle ups, heavy weighted pull ups, handstand push ups and jump high. Um, I build that those ratios. So go to kinobody.com/arrow, and thank you for listening. Bye.